let's prepare for our next summative assessment. Remember, if you haven't completed this worksheet and you're just here to copy answers, you're going to get nothing out of it. This is designed to check your work, get feedback, and then learn from it. If you're just copying it down, expect to do poorly on the summative. The choice is yours and yours alone. Here we have a car mass 650 kilograms at rest on top of a hill 40 meters high. It rolls down to the bottom of the hill and loses 10% of its energy in the process. That means at the top, it's not moving, it's just off the ground, all EG. Halfway to the ground, it has gravity because it's off the ground. It has kinetic because it's moving, but it's also started to dissipate. So we have a lot of gravity, a lot of kinetic, and a little e dis. At the bottom, it's moving, but it's lost or dissipated 10% of its energy. So we're looking at mostly kinetic, but a little e dis. So it's slower than it would have been if it was a frictionless hill. Here we're going to find the gravitational energy stored at the top. We know it's EG because our pie chart says so. We know it's EG because it's asking for the gravitational energy. Plug in what you know. Mass is in kilograms. Ch always check your energy uh, toolbox for units and variables. My uh, distance, my height off the ground is in meters, 40 meters. Plug it in and now we just have to multiply. So it means we started with 254,800 joules at the top. That's both our gravitational energy and our total energy throughout. If 10% is dissipated, how much kinetic energy remains? We know that all of our gravitational energy, our total energy, is equal to our kinetic and E dis at the end. Now 10% is dissipated, so if I wanted to find how much dissipated energy, I would multiply by 10%. Again, move that decimal two places to the left and multiply it by the total amount. That's how much energy is dissipated. I want to know how much is still useful, how much kinetic energy we have. So that's 90%. If I eat 10% of a pizza, I have 90% left. So 90% of the energy is 0.9 times the total. That gives me 229,320 joules. If I don't know how to get to the 0.9, to the 90%, I can use just the 0.1. But I need to remember that total gravitational energy equals kinetic plus E dis in this scenario. I can find my dissipated energy, my 10%, and subtract it from my total energy. Either way, you get the same amount of kinetic energy. Whether you subtract it from the total, so subtract that 10% from the total, or you find 90% of the total. To find how fast the car is moving at the bottom of the hill, we're dealing with kinetic energy. So I plug in what I know. I know how much energy is left. We said 10% was lost, so we only have 229,320 joules of useful energy. We know the mass. I'm going to turn something I don't know into something I do know. That's a messy multi-step equation. Now it's a two-step equation. My velocity, the variable I'm solving for, is being squared, and then it's multiplied by 325. So I'm going to go in the opposite order. I'm going to divide by 325 and then take the square root of both sides. So it's moving about 26.6 meters per second. Now we have a spring-powered toy with a mass of 1 kilogram and a spring constant of 5.5 newtons per meter. It's released on the floor. The spring is compressed 0.03 meters. Assume there is no dissipated energy. How much elastic energy is stored in the spring? Well, we're talking about a spring. It asks for elastic energy, and we're given a spring constant. That's our formula right there. And because it's asking for energy, not force, we're using this formula. I'm going to plug in what I know, one half of my spring constant times the distance the spring was stretched. If you're unsure of which variables go where, look at the units on your toolbox. We plug in what we know, we need to square and then multiply. It's just order of operations at this point. 0 0.0025 joules of energy is stored in the, in the spring. When the spring's fully unwound, how much kinetic energy does the toy car have? Well, we know nothing's dissipated. So all of my energy before equals all of my energy after. So my elastic energy is 0 0.0025. So my kinetic energy is 0 0.0025. I put in a little bit of energy, so I'm going to get out a little bit of energy. That means I can expect a very small velocity. Now I can calculate that velocity, how fast. We're dealing with kinetic energy. It asked how fast it's moving. There's only one formula. It has velocity and kinetic energy. Plug in what you know. It's asking me to solve for velocity. So if you have to circle that variable to remind you not to plug anything in, do so. 
I know the kinetic energy. I know the mass. Now I need to turn this equation into something I recognize. Half of 1 is half. Now I'm squaring V and multiplying by 0.5. So to undo that, I'm going to divide by 0.5. Then I'm going to take the square root. Again, look at what operations are happening in order. And then do the inverse operations in the inverse order. This gives me a velocity, as predicted, of 0.022 meters per second. Very small velocity because we had a very small amount of energy. Let's talk just forms because you can't figure out the formula without the form. A baseball is thrown in the air and falls back down. So we're throwing it straight up and it's coming straight down. On the way up, it's all kinetic when I throw it. It's not off the ground. It's just moving. Nothing stretched and nothing has been dissipated. It's closer to the top. We know that an object slows down on the way up, so less kinetic energy. And it's more than halfway up, so it's more than half gravitational energy. At the very top, it stops for a second before falling back to the ground. So we're going to assume no kinetic, all gravitational, nothing was dissipated. It's not stretched or compressed. Here we're halfway back to the ground, so it's half EG, half EK. Because it's halfway through its total flight distance, that means the other half has to be velocity, has to be motion. At the very end, it's not off the ground, it's only moving. And we know that as an object reaches the ground from a height, it speeds up. So our EK keeps getting bigger on the way down, smaller on the way up. Here we have a ball rolling to a stop. Let's draw some pie charts. Here we have all EK at A. It's moving. It hasn't had a chance to dissipate. It just started moving. Here, it's slowed down. We can see that arrow shorter, so there's less kinetic energy. This also means that the kinetic energy became dissipated energy. Something had to happen to it. At the very end, it's not moving. It's not off the ground. It's not stretched or compressed. So that means that all of the energy was wasted as thermal energy. It was all dissipated.